starting from January 1, every time a rhino is poached anywhere in South Africa, we insert a cross in the ground. Unfortunately, there's about two deaths per day now. It's always a sad moment. And the sadness comes out because I think of this dead, lifeless, beautiful rhino, this creature of the earth lying there with no face, being eaten by the vultures. This could be stopped, yet 668 of 24,000 left were killed last year. They're quickly gonna go extinct. Who do I punch? Who are we to say to the Chinese what they should and shouldn't use? Look in Orion's eyes. You see a soul. Hands on the roof, on the roof, on the roof! Hundred percent that'd be prepared to die to save rhinos. If I happened to make an enormous amount of money, wouldn't it be wonderful for the rhino? There is too many greedy people out of there. They don't feel anything for a rhino. There are some people who have completely irrational, illogical views on what we should do to save the rhino. My name is Matt Bracken. I'm from the USA. I'm here in South Africa doing anti poaching work. here to protect what what humans are destroying. Let's do this. Back in 1984, I got my start in Africa. 12 years old, my grandfather got remarried, decided to take me on his honeymoon uh, to Kenya and Tanzania and East Africa. And we're on our first day of safari, and we're going down into what's called the Ngorongoro Crater. Giant, beautiful Eden of this world, a crater just filled with beautiful animals. And we're just on the road going down into the crater with our safari guide. And the first animal I see on safari is a big male leopard jumps out, just stands in the middle of the road. I've never seen anything so beautiful, and all I could do is just stare at it. I stared at it, it stared at me. I'd never seen an African animal outside of the zoo. So since I was 12 in 1984, I've known that Africa is where, where I feel at home and where I should be. <laughs> It's always been in the in Chinese medicine or in traditional medicine, the, rhino, the use of rhino horn. But at that time, there was five different subspecies. There was there was rhinos in China. There was rhinos in Vietnam, and now those are all killed out. They just just a year and a half ago killed the last rhino in Vietnam. Ninety percent of the rhinos living in the whole world are here in South Africa. So this is where the real war is, because people are coming over here now. And, and killing the African rhinos and sending the horn back to Asia, where it's used in, in Vietnam for a hangover cure and for a cure for cancer, and also in China for 2,000-year-old traditional medicine, which is the, the cooling of the blood. Yeah, I put some in vodka, but I had to put a bit of cinnamon with it because it didn't taste very good. I don't, I don't think it worked, whatever I was trying to do with it, I don't think it worked. And I don't think rhino horn works, by the way, and that's my personal view.
until we can make the rhino pay for everybody who's associated with that rhino. We will lose the war, I believe. My name is John Hume. My farming operation uh, involves mainly breeding rhino. Obviously, I believe that the more rhino we can breed, the less likely they are to go extinct. I have, over the last 20 years, become an ardent fan of the rhino, mainly because my personality always backs the underdog and the rhino is currently truly our underdog in terms of conservation measures in South Africa. The white rhino in particular is the most user-friendly animal I believe in Africa. It is a wonderful, wonderful animal that is forgiving and forgetting. They are very trusting, sincere animals. What we should be doing is taking some of those rhinos in the Kruger Park, which they're going to kill anyway, and we should teach the communities to farm with rhinos. Why don't we uh, bring in the poachers into the fold to make money legally, not kill rhinos, but obviously that can only work if we have legalization. We need to breed more rhinos. We've just got to keep them alive, feed them. Whether you feed them in wilderness areas, in game reserves, or on a farming enterprise like myself, doesn't matter. They'll reward you with calves, whichever way you do it. Buttercup. For a host of reasons, we have hundreds, and 90% of them survive. And in the wild, 100% of them would be dead. They were separated from their mother in a felt fire, rejected by the mother. Mother didn't have any milk. So that's one example where we do much better than the wild. What can possibly be wrong with creating circumstances that can so much more help the numbers of rhinos to increase? John Hume is a businessman. He's made his money in his life. He's, well, he's, he's got a different view to, to what I've got. to fight for my rhinos. It, it, that is one of the things I've made a decision long ago. I'm Salumi Moritz and um, I'm the founding member of Palola Rhino Sanctuary. A guy like John Hume, he's got millions. I'm fighting for a few rhinos for conservation for our heritage, for our kids, our grandchildren, to be able to see a rhino in the wild with a wolf. They are unicorns. They're definitely unicorns. They're ancient souls. <laughs> made the decision, listen, focus where you, you need it, where you can make a difference. Jomo, stop. I'm 
completely against legalized trade. There is no silver bullet in this whole punching incident. I just came to the conclusion, listen, you can't be all over. You can't satisfy everybody, but you can make a difference where I am now. So let me make a difference here. Let me fight for these. I can't fight for all the rhinos, but I can make a difference at least, yeah? I'm not going to be part of the generation who's going to sit back and do nothing for rhinos and just watch them go. Listen, I will be part of that war, even if we've got to go to that extent. Wake up! Wake up! So wake I ended up. up going through this very rigorous, this very physical, mental, incredibly challenging boot camp for anti-poaching rangers. ProTrack is the oldest privately owned anti-poaching firm in Southern Africa. It is as we protect the animals out there, out there in the bush. It's, it's the army for the animals. The rhinos are getting slaughtered at about two per day now. So yes, we are out here with ProTrack and we're holding the line and we're doing well and we're, we're, we're stopping a lot of this poaching. ProTrack and the other anti-poaching units are the only defense for these wild rhinos. I am the army of that rhino. That rhino has no defense against that weapon. And yes, it's one rhino. But there's no only one rhino. That rhino is all of them. That's all the 24,000. That's all of them right there. So I guess it angers me, the greed and the selfishness of these people that go out in the bush and assassinate a rhino simply for its horn, which doesn't work medicinally at all. But these old values do, so I guess I'm more pissed off at the whole thing. I'm prepared to die, and if I somehow die saving a rhino, well, imagine the exposure that that would bring, and that might be worth it. You just have this quiet scene of death. And there the rhino is with essentially no face. I was actually kind of embarrassed to be a human and ashamed. This is the foot of a black rhino. Been pretty cut up, horns gone and they just leave the rest for the vultures. And we got four of these rhino just around us, just within one kilometer, within a half mile. And I was angry. I wanted the person there, right there, who had done this. What do I do? It's already dead. It's gone, and I'm too late. I've had my own dead rhino poached. I've had nine rhinos poached. All of those nine were either bred by me or known by me. They, I know my rhinos. All of them, even though I have so many, equated to having somebody wantonly killing their dog or their cat. It makes me depressed. The whole scene of the rhinos is incredibly depressing. It doesn't matter how many dead rhinos you see. You never get used to it. Simona was, I could remember the day she was born, with great excitement in a family where she was living 100 kilometers from me. And getting that day the message that Simona's dad were poached, her mother was poached. That night she ran around her mother's carcass for life. and. Little did we know that she was wounded. So she must have fought for her dear life. It was a minute little bone chipped in that was in a pocket, like a cavity in her leg. We removed it. We did put in a lot of antibiotics. And she was up and going again. Within a week, Simona's leg was fine. Uh, with the other rhinos feeding. And one night she didn't come to eat with the other rhinos. I was concerned. 
And when we got there the next morning, seven o'clock, she was dead. To bury her, it was, it was, no, I'm going to cry. Uh, it was bad. That shouldn't have happened. <laughs> no, we followed her for six weeks. We've cared for her everything. And she died. I made a decision then that I will never let her won't ever end up in the illegal market. And we decided to bury her and put like a metal around her head and then concrete it. So that I know, and even that I'm not there, nobody's gonna, ever going to get that horn into the illegal market. So how do we stop rhino poaching? How do we stop this killing? Underlying problem at the moment is that there are people in the world who want rhino horn. If I have a fever, I'm taking rhino horn. Rhino horn is now the cure-all. We are not allowed to supply those people. So a poacher think it's a lucrative market. So they go and they poach them private lands or public lands. This person I want to punch. This person I wouldn't mind killing either. We must save the rhino. That must be our mission. To do that, we need to breed more rhino. There is no way that rhino farming is going to stop the poach. I think they're very happy, don't you? Yeah, look at these rhinos. They're in excellent condition all of which facilitates more rhino, more carving, longer life, less deaths in general, and more births. What can possibly be wrong with that? It's inhumane. So should we just now dig up Africa and make farms so he can keep ordering his rhino horn? It's actually cruelty to animals because I've experienced rhinos that was dehorned. There is so many bad things about dehorning a rhino that it's not right. Don't forget, my rhino's horns grow again. And in order to supply the demand, we'll have to pump them with hormones and make them grow quicker and make their horns grow faster. Within three years, you wouldn't even know it had been dehorned. And they live for more than 40 years. So what's the bug? We improve their nutrition so they carve more. They live longer. All in all, we are doing everything that enhances and increases the chances of their survival. To me, anybody who's against that is simply on the wrong track. We're actually creating a new rhino. I mean, the, the habits, the communication, everything is going against them. Now they're forced to live together and fundamentally change their way of life. I think that's absolute nonsense. You see, they fight and snort, and they do get hold of each other every now and again, but at least being dehorned, they are less likely to kill each other. And uh, to me, that's a plus, not a minus, but look at these rhinos. How John Hume is doing it, I totally disagree. Every person that I've spoken to about who's against legalization comes out with the most illogical, nonsensical arguments on God's earth. There is no reason why we must legalize rhino horn trade, that it will stop the boat. Salome Maritz is one of those people. We're all in this together. Nobody's on the same page. Unless you can have a mutual win-win situation in Africa, the animal will die, the animals will be pushed out. That world I don't want to be a part of.